Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations. Did you know that there's over 30,000 table saw injuries in the U.S. every year? I've developed a six-part video series on table saw safety to prevent you from being one of those injuries. I recommend that you watch all six videos because each one covers different topics. The first video is on how to be physically and mentally ready to use a table saw. So let's get started. Now we're going to talk about personal protective equipment. And this is good timing because we have an uninvited guest that has just arrived at the shop. And I don't think they were adequately prepared in order to use the table saw. But let's find out. Dude, let's hurry up and cut some wood on this table saw because I'm really late for dinner, man. A friend here has some work to do before he turns on that table saw. He should tie back his long hair. He should wear safety glasses. He should wear dust protection. He should wear hearing protection. He should remove any loose jewelry, any loose clothing. I also don't recommend that he wear gloves. I also recommend that he wears closed-toed shoes and that he should not be drinking alcohol, taking drugs, or medications. And lastly, he should not be in a hurry when he's going to operate the table saw. Now, let's go into each of these items in more detail. Eye protection. I wear prescription glasses. However, these are not safety glasses like this pair here. Case in point, I was watching a YouTube video and a woodworker was describing that he had a kickback where a block of wood came up, hit him right in his glasses, smashed the lens into his eyeball, and he has partial blindness in his eye now. Now, for people who wear prescription glasses, they do make safety glasses that will fit over your prescription glasses. Now for me, I find that wearing the safety glasses over top of my prescription glasses, they tend to be a little more distorted and tend to fog up a little bit more. So what I use is a face shield. I do a lot of lathe work and I wouldn't go near a lathe without a face shield. And I find that by wearing this, that I can easily have the visor up and then when I'm ready to actually do the work, turn on the power tool, the table saw in this case, I just bring it down. So that works for me. Now let's talk hearing protection. It's really important that you protect your hearing from the noise of power tools because they can cause permanent hearing loss over time. For me, I like to use these earmuffs. They're very effective and uh, comfortable to wear. Another option would be these disposable earplugs. Now for dust protection. Even if you have a dust collector in your workshop, you're never going to capture all the wood dust that's created. And it's especially important for the fine dust that's typically less than 10 microns. That can float around in the air for hours. And that's the size that can get deep into your lungs. And unfortunately, wood dust is known to cause cancer. So it's really important to protect your health. For the longest time, I would use these disposable N95 dust masks. However, they would tend to get very hot and also would fog up my glasses, which also means that there was some leakage of air because there's no place for it to go when you exhale. So I've come across this and I've been using this more recently. This is made by Milwaukee. 3M also makes a version that has one of these vents in it. And that is a big improved design. Uh, because it allows you to exhale your hot air um, when you're uh, breathing. The other thing is what I like about these is these straps actually are adjustable. Shortly I'll be doing another video which is going to focus on all the different types of dust masks that you can use, both the disposable as well as the reusable. And there are several brands out there of which I have purchased some recently and I'll be doing a, uh, an evaluation of those various masks. Now, long hair. Now for me, I don't have long hair, but for people that do, it's really important that you tie your hair back and, and make sure that there's no chance that it can get caught in rotating equipment. There was a woman at Yale a while ago where she actually got her hair caught in a lathe and she wound up uh, dying from this accident. It's important to remove loose jewelry like necklaces and bracelets, that type of thing so that they don't accidentally get caught while you're operating uh, any kind of rotating equipment. 
Also, loose-fitting clothes, especially in the winter time when you are wearing long sleeves to make sure that they have really tight cuffs so there's no chance of any of your arm or sleeves uh, from the clothing getting caught. Also, gloves. I know there are a number of people that like to use gloves when operating equipment. For me, I'm personally not comfortable with that. And uh, in general, OSHA does not recommend using gloves when you're near rotating equipment. That is a personal decision that you'll need to make there. Long pants versus shorts. Hey, that's really a personal preference. For me, I like to wear long pants in the shop just because of normal bumps and bruises that could take place from bumping into equipment or what have you. But again, if you're in a 90 degree garage, I perfectly understand why you'd want to wear shorts. Sandals versus shoes, that might be a different story. So for me, I like to wear closed-toed shoes that protect my feet, and they also have a cushion that gives me more support. I have seen a lot of YouTubers out there that are wearing sandals, and I even saw one with bare feet. For me, I don't even necessarily get into the shower with bare feet. So my point is, I think that is on the more of the dangerous side. You've heard of the hot dog test that SawStop has done with their table saws. I'm going to show you a hot dog test with a hand chisel, dropping it from a workbench height onto hot dogs and try to see what kind of damage they would do. Okay, I'm using the best hot dogs money could buy for this test. I even put some nail polish on to make it look cool. Well, you can see from the damage here that this would have gone right to the bone if this was a real foot. Okay, now let's try it with a sneaker. All right, let's pull the hot dogs out. Uh, you can see absolutely nothing happened to them, which doesn't surprise me. So that's the importance of wearing shoes. So let's talk about the operator's mental condition. First, don't operate if you're impaired by alcohol, drugs, or medications. Don't operate any equipment if you're tired or fatigued. Don't be in a rush or due to deadlines. Don't be distracted due to be thinking about something else. Focus on the task at hand. Don't be distracted by other people, especially small children or animals running around in the shop. Avoid the monotony of doing the same job over and over. Take frequent breaks. Clear your mind. Most of all, if any little voice inside you is saying that this is not safe, don't do it. Find another way. Okay, now let's talk about some general shop tips. I recommend that you have a fire extinguisher in your workshop, as well as a first aid kit. My kit in particular has an eye wash solution inside that would aid in case I was to get anything in my eyes, such as any kind of solvent or any kind of debris. Uh, timing is of the essence. I also recommend that you install an anti-fatigue mat in front of your table saw. That really will help in cushioning your feet. Also, good lighting is important. I installed a LED light on a boom arm over the saw. And that has a dual purpose because it also holds my dust extractor hose that I have hooked up to my blade guard. Tell me more, table saw man. <laughs> okay, I will. So my next video is on what is kickback and how to avoid getting injured from kickback. So please click the link.